It's been a number of years since I last drove a Volkswagen Tiguan, and between then and now, the number of compact SUVs on the market has literally exploded. It now seems like there's one from every corner of the world to suit every kind of budget. And while the original Tiguan was a very good package, it now has to fend off a lot more competition. My abiding memory of the original is that it was a lot of fun to drive. It had a decent motor, good ride setup, and a well put together interior. I wasn't a big fan of the way it looked, simply because from some angles it looked ungainly, and those rounded rear lights also didn't really suit the SUV image. This car doesn't have that problem though. It is a lot more convincing because it just isn't nearly as soft. Volkswagen have done a great job of adding more muscle, bulking this car up and giving it more presence. And our test car also has the added benefit of the R-Line styling package. It also has the optional LED headlights, which add a bit of extra menace to the front end. You might think that this much chrome and 20-inch wheels aren't really the kinds of add-ons that would make for a convincing compact SUV, but the Tiguan is a brilliant-looking thing. Its styling is perfectly matched to its theoretical all-rounder abilities. Chunky enough to take on some dirt, but stylish enough to look good in the city. On the inside, though, there's little doubt as to where it would prefer to spend its time. There is a fair amount of luxury in here. Sure, it's all wrapped up in bog-standard Volkswagen design, but still, this is a top-class interior. You have to top up the 560,000 Rand asking price for things like this leather and the virtual instruments and the sunroof, but still, the basics, like the ergonomics and the great driving position, are spot on. Solidly put together, this interior really delivers a little more class than you might expect. The touchscreen setup works well and all your interactions with the car have a real sense of quality about them. It is a little somber in its all-black execution, but that's not really any different to most Volkswagens and it does nothing to detract from the sense of space in here. Boot space is on the upper end of the scale in relation to its competition, although you do sacrifice a full-size spare wheel for that. If you like what you've seen so far on the Tiguan, stand by, it gets better. The 2.0-litre TDI is available in three different flavours. We've got the most powerful one, 130 kilowatts, 380 newton metres, and it behaves pretty much like a good diesel should. Lots of power off the line and then not much beyond 4,500 RPM. But there is one thing that this engine is very good at. The fuel consumption in here borders on the unbelievable. With just a tiny bit of effort, we managed a figure of 7.3 liters per 100 Ks, which is exceptional for a car that weighs 1,800 kilograms and has the aerodynamic profile of an elephant. It's also not too far off VW's claim of 6.4 liters. The turbo diesel Tiguan is available as a front-wheel drive with a manual gearbox or with the drivetrain in our test car. Four-motion all-wheel drive matched to a seven-speed DSG dual-clutch gearbox. And those bits combined with the diesel engine means that this generation, pretty much like the original, is a lot of fun to drive. Even when you're pushing it in a way that you really shouldn't push a compact SUV, it delivers great turn and superb grip and a really surprising level of involvement. Taking on a set of corners while flicking through the gears using the shift paddles isn't compact SUV behavior, but the Tiguan not only seems to enjoy it, it actually seems to encourage it. And when you do back off and put it into cruise mode, it's just as happy, and the optional adaptive cruise control and head-up display do a lot to take the stress out of the daily commute. The only downside is those massive wheels, which tend to be a little noisy on rougher tar surfaces. The one thing we say about these kinds of cars is that yes, they can take on dirt, but they prefer tar. And that's because truthfully, most, if not all of them, will spend all of their lives on tar. But in the interest of doing a good job, we took the Tiguan onto dirt and we found out something else quite surprising. Just like the on-road drive, there is a genuine level of enjoyment in here. Sure, 20-inch wheels shouldn't be your first choice when going off-road, but they did nothing to impact on this car's sure-footed grip, even through some pretty rough and slippery sections. Riding 10 millimeters higher than regular versions, the 4Motion equipped Tiguan has a permanent all-wheel drive system fitted with a center diff that splits power between the front and rear axles as required. It's also governed by Volkswagen's active control system that sets various parameters like the ESC and ABS for off-road conditions. And if you're really serious about going off-road, you can opt for a package that improves approach angles. So, style, comfort, on-road enjoyment and a good dose of off-road ability. 
this Tiguan has me thinking. I am very tempted to call the Volkswagen Tiguan a Range Rover light. Sure, it's not as luxurious or as capable as a Range Rover, it's also not as expensive, but in terms of how well it delivers in every aspect of the drive, it's just as convincing. And the best part is at 560,000 Rand, it's priced just right. The two-litre motor delivers a typically turbo diesel drive with decent bottom-end torque, but matched to the seven-speed DSG gearbox and all-wheel drive, it endows the Tiguan with a surprising measure of on-road ability and enjoyment. It's a superb package with great styling, comfortable interior and genuine driving talent both on and off-road. The only downside is the 20-inch wheels, which can be noisy and aren't the best off-road option.